Are we good to start? Welcome. Good afternoon. This is our 10th annual Department of Nursing White Coat Ceremony. I'm Rosemary Dale. I've had the opportunity to meet this row and part of this row and the people from Idaho who are back here and somebody from Bermuda. I said you get a long distance awards here today. Uh, as I said, I'm the dean of, I'm the chair of the Department of Nursing. I'm thinking of Noma sitting up here. And uh, I have had the privilege of serving in that role for over 10 years now. I wanna thank you all for coming today. I realize that many of you have traveled and probably had to miss a day of work. Thanks for making the effort to be present. I will also say that this event has symbolism, but should also be an enjoyable and relaxed event. Feel free, please feel free to get up, take pictures, and make sure that you capture your loved one in, uh, in today's festivities. I wanna take the opportunity to thank some special guests for being here today. Dean Noma Anderson, for Professor of Communication Sciences and Disorders, and Dean of the College of Nurse, Nursing and Health Sciences. And Allison Brown, graduate of the University of Vermont School of Nursing, recently retired president of the University of Maryland Medical Center. And Allison will be speaking to you. Allison, there you are. Among the very special guests are a portion of our faculty. They're the most important people to you over the next two, three, four, or five years. I'm gonna ask them to come forward and introduce themselves and tell you where and when you will see them. Also, I think this is an opportunity for the family and friends to try to connect the names with names you will hear from the students in days going forward. So, Professor Smith, you're first. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Professor Smith. Uh, I am a neurology nurse by background and I teach in the direct entry year for the masters and doctorate nurses. Uh, I'm Teresa Graziato. Um, I teach public health your senior year and my clinical experience is in hematology oncology. Good evening, everyone. The whole front section knows me very well. Hi, I'm Professor Glassman. Uh, I teach the art and science of nursing. I also teach palliative and chronic illness care. And I work on the oncology floor as well as in infusion with a background in critical care. Hi, everyone. My name is Elise Tarby, and my background is as a palliative care nurse practitioner. I spend a lot of my time doing research about communication during serious illness, and I teach many of you in ethics, uh, which you can take any of your years, <laughs> and um, palliative care in your senior year. Hello, my name is Rebecca Nagel, and I am a pediatric nurse practitioner, and I teach for the undergraduates, I do the compassionate care course, and then a uh, travel course for the compassionate care, and then in the graduate program, I teach your pediatric, uh, a few pediatric courses in clinical. Hi everyone, I'm Terry Cahill Griffin and I am the Vice Chair of the Undergraduate uh, Nursing Program. And sophomores, we've already met um, during sophomore orientation. And um, for those of you parents who um, might have gotten emails and communications, often my name is um, in the subject line, so that, that, would be, that would be me. My clinical specialty is um, obstetrics and I do that you know, um, sort of on the side as my primary role is really to kind of do the nuts and bolts of um, getting the faculty what they need to bring you the awesome curriculum um, that they do. Um, so more behind the scenes work. Welcome everyone. Hello everybody, I am Tyler Moeller. I am an emergency nurse and I teach in the pre-licensure year for the direct entry programs in nursing. 
uh, in the uh, clinical courses, and then in the undergraduate program, you'll see me in the spring semester of your senior year to teach uh, public health clinical. And I appear in many other places for one day at a time. Hi, everybody. I'm Holly Whitcomb. I'm a family nurse practitioner. I practice in Hinesburg. I went through this program as a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Master's, and Doctorate, so I think you've chosen wisely. I, uh, I teach in the primary care content in the graduate nursing program, both women's and gendered health and acute and common health conditions in primary care. Welcome. Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah Manachek, and um, I do a lot of work in our simulation lab. Oh, my background is specialty surgery nursing, um, but I'm also teaching adult med surge two and health alterations and transition to practice in your senior year. So I'll see you then. Good afternoon, I'm, I'm Professor Tara Burnham and I recognize some faces here from Healthcare Ethics. So um, I teach Healthcare Ethics um, both in the fall and the spring. So as Dr. Tarby said, you can do have the opportunity still if you have not already. And um, my background is in um, medical intensive care unit nursing. And I also teach in your senior year in adult health um, part two. And I also teach some clinicals, so welcome. Hello everyone, I'm Carrie Prendergast. Um, my clinical specialty is the care of the older adult. Um, I'll have you all sophomore, spring semester, next semester. Um, I co-teach with Dr. Janelle, Sar Dr. Professor uh, Janelle Sarnovitz in Introduction to Clinical Skills. And I'm currently working in the pre-licensure year as well with the graduates, the Depens and the Mepens. And then I'll have you from, for some clinicals um, in your junior and senior year. Good afternoon, I'm Kathleen Monforti and I teach in the grad program in our direct entry. I teach pharmacology. For the undergrads, I will see you for your first adult health course that I co-teach with Professor Nevius. I also do clinical and my specialty is specialty surgeries. Welcome. Thank you very much. These are important people. You may remember their names, you may remember their faces. You are more likely to remember them and put a name and a face on it than perhaps we are to you. So if you see us in Price Chopper, in the halls, please say hello, please identify yourself. I wanted to stop for a second and just say that each day, students come to class, they know what time to be there and where to go. They receive name tags, get access to EPIC. For those of you who don't know, that's the medical record at the Academic Medical Center. They have events planned and executed. And for some of you, they get reminded to complete their mandatories. Somehow flowers and apples and small candies appear in Ira Apple and Ira Allen <laughs> at four o'clock on Friday, September 27th. There's no miracle there. There's work of the tireless staff. For the students, get to know them. They will be invaluable on your journey through the programs. Christina Adamsek and Mary Hong, situated in hiding in the back of the room, please wave. <laughs> they sit in the front office along with Matt, who you may have had some contact with. Get to know them, they can help you. So everyone is here to be helpful, and we want, to, we want to know you as you want to know us. And I simply want to point out that faculty and staff are here for an important reason. You don't come to UVM for the buildings, the Sodexo food, or the fall colors. You come here for the faculty and the support staff to provide the backbone of the culture the education and the processes that assure the highest level education. So please partner with us 
in allowing you to get the most you possibly can out of your time at the University of Vermont. Now let's switch to white coats. A little bit about the students receiving white coats today. There are 162 students representing three different paths to professional nursing. The students come from three entry points. First, and compromising the largest group, are the undergraduate students, many coming directly from high school, some coming a little bit more circuitously. The undergraduate students are preparing to complete a baccalaureate degree in nursing and to begin a career as registered nurses with the option to move on to graduate degrees. And that's this largest group right up front. The next group is the direct entry master students, all of whom hold a, master, a bachelor's degree and are on a path to becoming a registered nurse and ultimately to completing graduate education. They're in the middle there. Can you just raise your hand, master's people? Great. The and this is our first year having a master's program for direct entry students. So we just began, we got the idea, we thought, well, let's move with this, and, and we moved it right along. So we have a small cohort now, but we expect a much larger cohort next year. The final group is the direct entry doctoral students, all of whom have bachelor's degrees or higher and are on a path to registration and licensure as professional nurses, but are on an ultimate four-year path to completing the doctor of nursing practice and to becoming licensed and certified as nurse practitioners. Can I just ask the doctoral students to identify themselves back there? Hello, everybody. Now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Allison Brown, UVM class of 1978. How many of you were alive? No one. <laughs> I always say I never say my birth date <laughs> because people just look horrified. Allison was a member of Pi Beta Phi. Any, any Pi Phi's here? Any of you? Sorority people? Okay, there's a couple here. Connect with us afterwards. And Allison also swam competitively on the UVM swim team. After earning her nursing degree at UVM, she moved to Baltimore and received a degree in public health from Johns Hopkins University. She went on to have a long career at the University of Maryland Medical Center, recently retiring as the president of that organization. It gives me great pleasure to turn the podium over to Allison, who will give you some insights into her journey. Good afternoon. I am thrilled to be here. Thank you for that beautiful introduction, Dr. Dale. This is such an important moment for you and for also your parents, your family, your friends, your partners who are gathered with us today. So who knew that 50 years ago, the first time I was on this stage playing my cello in the University Symphony, I did like my one credit A's, <laughs> but I could never have imagined being here for this moment when I was sitting in the chair where you are. You have chosen a path to serve others, and to spend your life sharing your gifts, your knowledge, your expertise, your compassion, and most importantly, your time and energy in service to others is what this world needs, and I salute each and every one of you. My journey was not typical. I want to share with you a few things about what I learned along the way and how beginning my career as a nurse served as a solid foundation throughout my entire professional life. My decision to pursue a nursing education was influenced by three gifts that I'll share. The first was from my fourth grade teacher who taught me about Clara Barton, a hospital nurse during the Civil War and who was the founder of the American Red Cross. I thought at the age of 10, she was amazing a gift from my mother, 
a woman who was fierce about her four daughters, growing up to be independent, self-sufficient, and to make a difference in service to others. So I knew that when I finished college here at UVM, I would always be able to get a job and support myself independently. The third gift was from my father. He was a pharmacologist who conducted clinical research and who, when teaching me how to clean a fish on the shores of Lake Champlain, turned it into an anatomy lesson. And that fed my curiosity for biology, science, and how things work. Starting out as a novice nurse, I wanted to experience all aspects of nursing practice. Beginning uh, my career at the, at the Thomas Jefferson University Hospital in Philadelphia, across med surge, ICU, cardiac cath lab. And then after taking a little time to travel to see the world, I came back to Vermont, working at Porter Medical Center in Middlebury. One day I was visiting an elderly woman who lived next door to me when her home health nurse came to change a dressing on her leg. I was curious about what is home care and what would it be like to pursue that? So I was inspired to learn more and I took a risk to go in a new direction where I would be out on my own all day without the structure of a hospital work environment. And it was in home care that I learned about all the factors that contribute to health and chronic disease. I also enjoyed driving around Addison County with my binoculars and my field guide to the birds in the seat next to me. My nursing education, training, skills, and experience working as part of a multidisciplinary team has served me well in every position I've held since completing graduate school. And as I said, it's the foundation under which every bit of responsibility that I've held stands. And here's some examples of how important that foundation was. I decided to pursue a master's in public health degree rather than a more traditional graduate degree in nursing. And here was my thinking. At the bedside or in someone's home, I certainly could see the impact and the difference that I was making in the lives of individual people. However, I wanted to see how I could impact the health of people I would never see. And how could I influence the health of whole groups of people or populations? So aside from my required courses in biostatistics and epidemiology, et cetera, I decided to take two electives that I thought would be very practical if I was ever going to be in a position of managing or an organization. Basic accounting and introduction to healthcare finance. Nothing ambiguous about either of those courses. <laughs> And it was a professor, a visiting professor, who was a partner in a major public accounting and management consulting firm in Baltimore, who I interviewed with after, before I graduated. And I was willing at that point to start at the bottom of a very different ladder as an entry new staff consultant, despite having eight years of experience under my belt. But our clients were hospitals. And with that experience, I was very at ease talking with hospital administrators and physicians while learning the business of the problems we were engaged to support. And during those years at Management Consulting, I already knew what it meant to work on a team. And with my nursing training, how to problem solve, how to conduct an assessment, how to analyze trends, how to gather data, how to formulate a plan, and solutions to a complex problem. Becoming a hospital executive was not on my radar when I was sitting where you are today. But the University of Maryland had been a client of mine as a consultant, and I liked the people and the culture, and I thought, why not? I'll try this. And so I started a new role that was established to be the Vice President of Strategic Planning. And five years into my experience at the University of Maryland, I raised my hand when I saw an opportunity to take on marketing and communications. This was fundamentally about building referral relationships with our faculty and community colleagues and figuring out how to communicate with the, ex with the outside world. And in that role as a nurse, I always had in mind our patients and families. I learned how to conduct focus groups, conduct consumer research, and what I thought about was what would a person newly diagnosed with cancer 
want to know when making a decision about where to receive their care. The biggest risk I took on was when I was asked to become the president of the University of Maryland Medical Center's Midtown Campus, one of two academic medical centers in Baltimore. The hospital had just experienced a very public failure in patient care. Did I have what it took to motivate, inspire, and build a team that would, could recover and take pride and regain trust in our community? And the person who I was reporting to at the time said, Allison, you have everything you need to do this job. Well, today, you are entering the clinical setting with a long list of skills and tasks to practice. And while these are essential and vital to developing proficiency and expertise, and yes, people will rely on you to perform them safely and correctly, but the person you are caring for also needs your care. What does caring look like in any position that you hold in healthcare? It's how you listen. It's how you ask questions in the face of ambiguity. It's how you notice conflict and de-escalate. It's how you reassure a worried family, partner, colleague. And it's how you put tools in your patient's hands so that they can manage their own health. And make no mistake about it, you are a leader today. Here's what I want to share with you about what leadership is and how it can influence the people around you. Earlier in my career, I was inspired by someone who gave a speech at a con national conference, a passionate champion for workplace safety and excellence also in healthcare. He described how a team or an entire organization has the opportunity to accomplish great things when any member of the staff can say yes to these three statements. The first one is, I am treated with courtesy and respect by everyone I interact with every day. Second, I have what I need to do my work and make a contribution to this organization that brings meaning to my life. Third, someone whose opinion matters to me, recognizes me, and thanks me for what I do. This resonated so strongly with me, I still have the piece of paper where I furiously wrote down those notes, because we know that to have a strong safety of culture, it relies on team members of all levels to be able to feel free to speak up, to feel respected, and to notice when they see potential for harm. We also know that a patient's experience is shaped by everyone they interact with, from the front door of the hospital to prep and recovery outside the OR. So here's how I applied this way of thinking to the teams I led. I'm treated with dignity and respect by everyone I interact with every day. The people who clean the rooms are as important as the people who perform surgery. If they don't do their work well, a perfect surgery can get undone. Are these people important? Absolutely. They may not have prestigious credentials, but they are able to do their work with pride and know that they're making a significant contribution. When you start out in the clinical setting, look at the people around you and acknowledge everyone who's helping to care for patients. Are they being treated with dignity and respect? Nothing broke my heart more than when talking with support staff that nurses and doctors made them feel like they were invisible. I have what I need to do my work and make a contribution to this place that brings meaning to my life. I know that as the president of a hospital rounding on the units in the departments that Mr. Taylor and Ms. Gloria in housekeeping felt tremendous pride in what they did. And they also didn't hesitate to let me know when there were things that they needed to do their work even better. It's easy to see how a nurse, a therapist, a physician, a social worker could be seen as a caregiver. But I emphasized how every single person working in a hospital or a healthcare setting is taking care of patients. From the dietary services, security, facilities, they're all doing it. Someone whose opinion matters to me and says thank me for what I do Thank you is so powerful. 
Have you experienced someone whose opinion matters to you when they said, great job today? When you see a housekeeper cleaning a room or an exam room or the operating room, pause and take a moment to say thank you. Your work is helping keep our patients safe. So in closing, I'd like to leave you with three things to think about for the student nurse that you are today and imagining who your, fu your future self might be. Be open to possibilities. Don't be afraid to take a risk that others might see as a curious direction. Trust that everything you are learning here is going to be a foundation that will serve you well as you go out into the world and experience the work ahead of you. Expect that your career path is not straight. Few are. And there are so many places where people with a background in nursing are doing amazing things in many settings and organizations. So embrace that opportunity for change and don't fear taking a risk because that also helps you learn new things. Trust me, I had plenty of moments where I was scared to death, but working worth the risk, and it allowed me to accomplish more than I ever could have imagined. Second, be thoughtful about how you choose your time and energy. Choose wisely, because here, here's something important that you need to know. Well, energy can be depleted. It can also be renewed and replenished. But time, on the other hand, is not a renewable resource. Are you spending your time doing what you love with people you respect? And are you energized with how you're spending your time? And last, think about what kind of leader you are today. You make a difference every day in how you treat people, how you advocate for the resources you need, because your work brings meaning to your life. And never forget to notice the work of others around you and share your gratitude for what they do, no matter how small or seemingly insignificant. So no matter where your journey as a nurse takes you, as you wear your white coat today and in the days ahead, always remember the profound and rewarding responsibility that you have in caring for and leading people who are placing their trust in your hands. Thank you. Thank you for your words, very inspiring. I pulled a couple of sentences out of there that I will remember. One of them is, please raise your hand. I want everybody to think about that with, whether you're in the classroom or in another setting. Please speak up and raise your hand. Um, I hope the other thing you're taking away from here today is the path that Allison has walked. This was a kickoff point for her. Perhaps that's a bad word, kickoff nursing. You can do anything with nursing. Your career in nursing does not end at the bedside in the ICU. Perhaps it doesn't even start there. I'm hoping that you have entrepreneurial thoughts, that you have leadership thoughts, that you expect to go out and influence policy. You have so many options. Please do not restrict yourself. And remember, raise your hand. Volunteer, get out there. Uh, finally, let's get to the white coats. Um, hold on a split second here now till I find out where I am because I've lost my place. Because I moved your papers. You moved my papers, Well, <laughs> I told you this is very informal. Uh, I'm gonna just say a word about the white coats. The white coats have been around for a long time. They're a symbol. People used to always wear a white coat in the clinical setting. That's not necessarily the case anymore. If you wear it, it's frequently to hold your iPad or to hold your pens or anything else you might be carrying with you. Uh, at the same time, it's, a, it's symbolic. And it's symbolic of exactly what Allison said. It's symbolic of the trust that people are going to place in you as the individual who will in many cases intervene for them at what is the worst day of their life. 
So please remember that. The white coat, I'm afraid, will end up on the floor of some of your closets after the staff has beautifully steamed all the wrinkles out of them. But remember, it is a symbol, and that's what we're doing today. We're welcoming you into this discipline, and we're indicating to you that the trust that people have and will place in you, we expect will be very well placed. So I'm going to move along to um, introduce Dr. Teresa Graziano, who will read the names of the students who will receive their white coats. Teresa. And I, I, let me just say also that, come on up. Oh, sure. Yeah, that the coats will be distributed by Dr. Tara Burnham, Dr. Kathleen Monforte, Professors Carrie Prentergast, and Tyler Mueller. And one caution, your left pocket, there's something in there, please don't go into that pocket until we can all go in together. There you go. Love it. All right, I'm so delighted to be welcoming the undergraduates into the profession. Uh, we'll start. Abato. Yes. Sarah Abato. Freya Abbey. Ava Adams. Emma Adamanis. Dahlia Almagadi. <laughs> Caitlin April. <laughs> Elias Amari. Oh, I'm so sorry, I went fast. <laughs> Ava Barlow. <laughs> Oliver Barrett. <laughs> Mia Beck. Sydney Burner. Nikita Bajou. Jamie Billings. Madeline Bobrowski. <laughs> Nate Boyer. <laughs> Finn Bradley. Victoria Butler. Nora Carol Millens. Grace Chandonet. Sage Conley. <laughs> Ellie Correa.
Kelsey Crow. Jim Cusick. Jocelyn Daniel Quintero. Marin De Janeiro. Ali Dickinson. Claire De Giovanni. Grace Edwards. Eva Fabian. Hope Fagan. Fiona Finn. John Galgon. Alyssa Gobin. Madison Grace. Isabel Gravlin. Campbell Grubut, sorry, Grubrood. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Campbell. <laughs> Caitlin Hamilton. Rachel Hamlin. Theodore Hanley. Jaden Hardy. <laughs> Steph Horovis. <laughs> Katie Harrington. <laughs> Sherry Hausman. Alana Heenan. Niles, oh, sorry, Hogan. Yeah. Niles Hogan. <laughs> Nina Holm. <laughs> Annabelle Hunt. Nico and Delaclay. <laughs> Isabel Einady. <laughs> Megan Ishi. Lauren Joy. <laughs> Alexa Kelly. Hey. 
Maeve Kennedy. Keppel. Magdalena Keppel. Lauren Klein. Sydney Christ. Paula Coupin. Julia Larocco. John Lashinsky. Abigail Lindheim. Gwyneth Lister. Peyton Logan. Lucy Long. Kira Lorden. Marin McQueen. Is it Marin or Marin? Marin. Marin McQueen. Sadie Mansfield. <laughs> Carter Mathini. <laughs> Ruby May. <laughs> Charlotte McCutcheon. Sean McElhenney. Maggie McGlynn. Sienna Meyer. Madison Mooney. <laughs> Tristan Morales. <laughs> Emma Moreland. Montserrat Morones. Anna Morton. Kate Motherway. Alicia Mueller. Kate Mullen. <laughs> Elizabeth Mullen. Elizabeth Munger. <laughs> Abigail Munoz Wells. Tristan Niles.
Nicole O'Sullivan. Ira Perret. Amory Paylor. Madeline Polschmidt. Maeve Rader. Liam Rally. Alyssa Ramsey. Navjeet Rishan. Magdalena Robinson. Tyler Robb. Patrick Rocket. Olivia Rodriguez. Janelette Rodriguez. Saya Ross. Audrey Rushing. Mary Sabatino. Maddie Saunders. Julia Sakurkin. Finn Sewell McCann. Mercedes Shanty. Kelly Shen. Marin Silverblatt. Isaac Simon. David Sofer. Ali Spaulding. Will Stafford. Lydia St. Marie. <laughs> Hannah Stevens. <laughs> Leah Stevator. Audrey Sturba, uh, Serba. 
Connor Tate. Bess Tesluck. Laydoon Torwini. Lily Tracy. Addie Trahan. Caroline Tusek. Elena Vasquez. Mia Voiland. Lily Volkman. Summer Ann Walker. Molly Wilson. Layla Wordlaw. Madison Young. Jessica Zaffitz. I'm going to let um, Professor Smith take over for the Deppin students. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. I have the honor of presenting uh, the direct entry students. Asenel Bruce. <laughs> Hallie Calabres. Erica Chavez. Emily Christ. Marissa Grandy. Emily Hanny. Wajet Jew. Emmanuel Kessler. Alexander Lefebvre. <laughs> Dominica Lombardi. <laughs> Evelyn Luno. Ewan Miller. <laughs> Zenith Neb. <laughs> Annika Nielsen.
Adam Overbay. Lacey Reed. And happy birthday to Aaron Rolke. <laughs> Allison Schroeder. <laughs> Mallory Staskus. <laughs> Michaela Stoller. Jake Wallenius Duda. And Blair Yant. And I would like to ask our nursing students with white coats to please stand. Uh, Dr. Von Forty is going to lead you in the nurse's oath. So you should all have an oath at your seat. Go ahead and grab it and you're gonna repeat after me, okay? As a nurse dedicated to providing the highest quality care and services, I solemnly pledge that I will Consider the welfare of humanity and relief of suffering my primary concerns. Act in a compassionate and trustworthy manner in all aspects of my care. Apply my knowledge, experience, and skills to the best of my ability to assure optimal outcomes for my patients. Exercise sound professional judgment while abiding by legal and ethical requirements. Accept the lifelong obligation to improve my professional knowledge and competence. Promote, advocate for, and strive to protect the health, safety, and rights of the patient. With this pledge, I accept the duties and responsibilities that embody the nursing profession. I take this oath voluntarily with the full realization of the responsibility with which I am entrusted by the public. Congratulations and good luck on your next steps in your nursing journey. While the students are standing, I would ask you to reach into your left pocket, and you should find greetings in there from a former graduate, a working nurse, or a faculty member. These personal wishes are meant to connect you to the discipline and to wish you the best. Please feel free to contact the individual who's written you a message. Please sit down and be comfortable for about six more minutes. Uh, each year, 
we identify one alum, and perhaps someday it will be one of you, who has provided outstanding service to the discipline of nursing and to the University of Vermont. This year we are so pleased to award that recognition to our guest speaker, Alison Rahm. You have to give that back to me. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, so we are so thrilled to have you here with us today. We're going to wrap up a couple of items here. Tomorrow at 10 a.m., the Dean, 10, is, am I right, Noam, is it 10? Okay, I got to get my times right here. Uh, the Dean will offer greetings and information in the Carpenter Auditorium, and there'll be light refreshments outside the auditorium. Do you all know where that is for anyone, any parents, friends, students, anyone who's interested? We welcome you. It's in the, the uh, corridor between the Rowell Building and the medical school. So it's right, out, right outside there. Just look for the refreshments and you'll find them. Um, immediately following the dean's remarks, you're invited upstairs to the Department of Nursing where um, Dr. Manichek has set up the sim lab for you. I understand it's pretty exciting. Am I, am I right there, Sarah? That, that's, that's what Seth told me. So if you want to see the sim lab, is it Halloween-ish or what is it? It's what? But she said it's very exciting, but it's not Halloweenish. So if you want to, if you want to see the Sim Lab, um, we are we will be offering um, the opportunity to pass through. How many? What are the size of the groups that'll go through, Sarah? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. At so so there'll be um, there'll be continuous groups. We also I don't know if any of you are alums or no alums. We have the archives out in the conference room, so if you know somebody from the class of 1954, we invite you to look through those archives and see if, you, oh sorry, see if you can find anyone. Finally, for those of you that do know or don't know, UVM is a land-grant university, and therefore we have a very strong agricultural presence. And the UVM supports a horticulture research and education center to model sustainable farming practices through fruit and vegetable production. It provides education and research opportunities to the community and to the UVM students. A sampling of the apples from the UVM Horticulture Research and Education Center will be available in the back after this. Um, we hope we see you in the morning. It's been great having you today. Please remember, raise your hand please remember, say hello. Because I don't, I will not, I just see a sea of faces here, as do my colleagues. Please talk to us. We want to get to know you. Uh, in, enjoy some time outside with your family and friends, and we'll pass by there, and please say hello. Uh, may I ask, is there a photo being taken? Is there any reason for the students to leave first? No, okay. So I think let's let the students file out and then, uh, then the guests. So, Carrie, Carrie will give you instructions.